Welcome to the Sales Influence Podcast, where we talk about finding the why in how people buy. I'm your host, Victor Antonio, and today we're going to talk about finding ways to avoid giving away a discount. People always want a discount, right? You've had customers that, you know, you're close to closing the deal, everything's going well, and they say something like this, you know, Victor, is there any way you can give me a better price? Or, Victor, can I get a discount? Or can you do better on the price? And in order to close the deal, they'll say, look, Victor, the reason I'm asking for the discount is I'm going to talk to my manager and I really want to walk into that room with the best price that I can. Is there any way you can do better on this price? Oh, we've all been in that situation, right? It's like, oh, what do you do? Well, I'm going to tell you what you don't do. You don't give away the discount. I'm going to show you why it's difficult and why it's detrimental to give away a discount and how it makes it harder for you to sell in the future. For example, when you give away a discount, you've transmitted three things to that client. One, by giving away a discount, you devalued your product. In fact, not only did you devalue your product by giving away a discount, you also devalued it in the customer's eyes. Because if you really believe that your product is worth that price, you wouldn't have discounted it. And now you've told your customer that you don't even believe your own value because you're willing to discount the price. The second thing is you've conditioned the buyer for future purposes to ask for a discount. In other words, you gave them a discount, they're going to be thinking that the next time they buy from you, they're going to want to ask for a discount because you already gave them a discount on this deal, so they're going to do it again in the future when you do another deal. The third thing, why a discount is not good for you, is because it builds less trust. See, when you give the customer a discount, you know, let's play the scenario. Last minute, deal's about to close, the customer says, look, if you give me a discount, I'll be able to walk into my manager's office and present the best pricing. Victor, can you give me a discount? And let's say I gave the person the discount. Well, the person is now thinking, said, well, why did you give me the discount before? Why did you wait till now? Why did you wait till I asked for the discount? You know, in other words, they're not going to trust you in the future when it comes to presenting price because they're always going to be thinking, that's not his best price. And so you have to avoid the discount effect. You know, too often we as salespeople, we get so desperate, we want to close the deal that the first thing that comes to mind is give away a discount because you think it's helping you close the deal. But in many cases, it backfires on you. When you give a discount and you give it easily, the customer becomes very suspicious. And again, there's lack of trust that's going to be built. In other words, the customer is not going to trust you as much because you gave away discounts that quickly. Now, I'm going to show you seven ways to avoid giving a discount. Yes, seven ways to avoid giving a discount. Get ready to write this down. Now, in the last podcast, number one, in the last podcast, I talked about when somebody asks for, you know, wants a better pricing, all you can do is take away line items. In the last podcast, I talked about the endowment effect and how painful that is, that you'll always get a higher average price. But for the purpose of this podcast, all I need you to know is that when you're bidding and you've got multiple line items, basically turn that sheet of paper around, hand it to the customer with the proposal and says, why don't you take out what you don't want and then we'll recalculate the price. In other words, I'm not giving a discount. I'm telling the customer, go ahead and take out what you don't really need and we'll recalculate the price. In other words, I am not giving you a discount you're going to have to take some things off the list. That's the first strategy. The second strategy is maybe you present three options always in your proposal, good, better, best. And if they went with the best option and now they want a discount, you simply say, Mr. Customer, I can't really discount that product. But instead of the best product, why don't I give you the middle product, which is a better product? Not as good as the best. There's good, better, best. Since you can't afford the best, why don't you go with the better product? In other words, offer them a scaled-down version of an, or an alternative to what they want to buy. But again, notice I'm not giving away a discount. Number three, offer them a substitute, a totally different product. If you, you know, Basically what you're saying, I mean, you don't say this, but what you're thinking is, Mr. Customer, if you can't afford this, let me get, fi- sell you this because this is much cheaper. Find a way to offer a substitute. And again, maybe you won't be able to because you don't have one. But if you do, find a way to be ready to say, Mr. Customer, if that's too expensive, I understand that you can't afford that. Let's move over to this other product that we have that's in your price range. Notice again, I'm not giving away a discount. Another interesting strategy, one I use when I was selling is, 
I used to sell used items. We had some inventory that was used. These are return materials, return products that we had in our warehouse. So what I would do is when the customer said, Victor, I can't afford to pay that price. Well, Mr. Customer, if you can't afford this, and I know that's what you really want, in our warehouse, we have products that have been used, but they're basically brand new. I can offer you that, but I can't give you a discount. Again, pushing always the no discount rule. So that's one way of looking at it. Another thing you can do is offer a free service, right? Offer a free service. In other words, include some training with the product that you're offering or the service. We'll, we'll toss in one day of free training or maybe offer an extension on the maintenance support or maintenance and support. So in other words, find a way to offer some type of service that you'll include with the product. Never again, discounting the price though. The next one, number six, offer them a gift, like a lost leader. I call this, this is an interesting strategy. Sometimes companies have products that, you know, they don't cost a lot to make, but they, they, they complement what you're currently selling. So for example, if I'm selling, you know, an iPhone, right? And that's the product I'm selling and somebody wants a discount and says, well, I can't give you the discount on the iPhone, but what I'll do is I'll throw in this screen protector for free. Now, the screen protector doesn't cost me that much money, but I threw it in as a gift. Again, what I do is avoid the discounting conversation. The last option, number seven, give them some financial options. I think this is a very effective strategy. Instead of giving them a discount, it says, well, instead of giving you a discount, Mr. Customer, why don't we do this? Why don't we give you different terms? Like, for example, uh, we can extend the payment plans. That's one option where maybe you won't have to pay for the first 30 days. Instead of paying, you know, today, why don't we just extend the payments for the next 90 days and you won't have to make the pay first payment till the first 30 days are over with. Or if you're dealing with B2B, instead of offering a net 30, which means pay the full bill in 30 days, offer them net 60 or net 90, which means they can pay it the full amount in 60 or 90 days. This allows them to get their finances in order. So there you have it, seven ways seven ways that you can avoid discounting price. Let me go through them very quickly again. One, offer them to offer to take away line items. Number two, offer a scaled down version, not the best one, but maybe a good one. Offer them a substitute, a totally different product, or give them a used item, used item, something you have in your warehouse. Offer them a free service like training, you know, maintenance, support, uh, give them a loss leader, give them a gift, something that's complimentary, like the iPhone example, right? Just throw in a screen protector, something that isn't expensive. Last but not least, financial options. Give them more time to make the payments. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, say, Victor, I get all that, I understand all that, but sometimes I'm in a situation where if I don't give the customer a discount, I know I'm gonna lose the deal. I feel your pain. I'm with you on this one because there always are exceptions to the rule. So let's say that that is the situation. You simply have to give a discount. They want a discount, they're pushing for the discount and you feel, legitimately feel, that you need to give them something in order to close the deal. If that's the case, if you feel that the client really needs that discount to close the deal, then you, listen carefully, need to ask for something in return. For every concession you make, you ask for something in return. So if the customer is wanting a discount, you say, Mr. Customer, I'll give you a discount, but what'll help me is if we increase the average order size. You were thinking of buying 10 widgets, why don't we call it 20 and I can price it to you at about a 10% discount. Now I've increased the average order size, but I've also conditioned the customer to think this way, that every time I ask Victor for a discount, he's gonna ask me to buy more. Get the idea? The other thing you can do is maybe ask for an extended contract. If this is one of those monthly payment services, right, that you're selling, well, maybe say, well, Mr. Customer, I'll give you a discount. We'll do the 10% discount, but instead of doing a one-year contract, we'll do a two-year contract. How does that sound? Now, again, what am I doing? I'm conditioning the customer that every time he asks me for something, I'm gonna ask for something back. So the next time somebody asks you for a discount, try the seven strategies. And if it doesn't work, remember the golden rule that if you're gonna give a concession, you always ask for something in return. That's how it works. This is Victor Antonio. First of all, again, thanking you for listening to the Sales Influence Podcast. Again, give me a review on iTunes or Stitcher. Let me know what you think of the podcast. 
Second, don't forget to check out my website, seminarsonselling.com. Got some great training programs for you and your team. And last but not least, I want to thank you for listening in again. This is Victor Antonio always reminding you, selling ain't hard when you know how. Take care. Every manager can feel it. The difference between a motivated, value-driven sales team and one that's stuck in a rut. CEOs know the difference too. They can see it clearly in the profit and loss columns. The question is, how do you get your team to this elite level? Is there something extra you can do to break through the remaining resistance and equip them with the right mindset to grow your business? Yes, there is. But you're not going to do it with one of those cheesy inspirational speakers or some self-proclaimed guru. What you need is someone with a real business track record to deliver key insights in a captivating way to give your team the right tools for selling in today's tough marketplace. Enter Victor Antonio, experienced executive, innovative thinker, compelling speaker. He's ready to deliver the message you need your people to hear, not with a canned speech, but a customized dynamic keynote designed to deliver results. Bring Victor Antonio to your next event before the competition does.